Welcome to a fee way. Excellence without stress. So now we are going to curved mirrors. You know the previous lessons we were talking about the plain mirrors and those ones were normal. I told you that when you stand in front of your mirror, it's going to return whatever you show it. If you are wearing glasses, you are going to see yourself wearing glasses. If you are standing straight, you are going to, if you are sitting down, you are going to see yourself sitting down. So now the curved mirrors. So apart from plain mirrors, curved mirrors also reflect light incident on them. Such mirrors are therefore called spherical mirrors and they have a large number of scientific and practical applications. Yeah, look at for the shaving mirrors. Yes, car, these ones are curved mirrors. Car driving mirrors, parabolic mirrors of telescopes, mirror reflectors of searching lights are uh, uh, using such applications. You know that most times we are very, very comfortable using all these um, our driving mirrors to check ourselves because sometimes it might um, shape your head um, differently from the way you are supposed to look like so this curved mirror these are the curved mirror so we have the concave mirror and we have the convex mirror so we have the concave mirror and we have the convex mirror so let's talk about there are two types of curved mirror we have the convex and the concave mirrors they are made by slivering a glass tube which is part of a sphere so yes this is the part you know we already know that ideally light is supposed to go through the glass but because of the silvered part that was why the light will do what it will bounce back and give us an image so they are made by slivering a glass surface which is part of a sphere if the inside surface of this spherical part is silver like this one and the outside is the reflecting part the resulting mirror is a convex or diverging mirror they said if the inside of the surface like this one yes if the inside of the surface of this spherical part is silvered and the outside is a reflecting part the resulting image is called a convex or a diverging mirror it's called a convex or a diverging mirror if the outside of the surface is silvered if the outside of the surface is silvered and the inside surface is the reflecting part so this is the reflecting part the resulting mirror is known as a concave or converging mirror so let's check this is the arch surface and this is the reflecting surface so this for the concave mirror the inner part is the reflecting surface while for the convex the outer part is the reflecting surface so that's what differentiates them so look at it now both of them are curved but one the inner part is the reflecting surface while the other side the outer part is the reflecting surface have you seen that now so let's read that again if the inside surface of the spherical mirror is silvered and the outside surface is the reflecting outside here is a reflecting then that is a convex or diverging so you either call it a convex or you call it a diverging mirror it diverges then if the outside surface is silvered and the inside surface is a reflecting part the resulting mirror is known as a concave or converging mirror so part of a spherical mirror you know what we said the other time we assume that the mirror is actually a sphere divided into what into two so let me let's go back there this is a sphere divided into so it could be covered back we just divided the sphere into two and formed the curved what the curved mirror so this is a concave mirror and this is a convex mirror so let's not forget the reflecting surface and the one that is inside which is the what this one's outer part is the reflecting surface this one's inner part is the reflecting surface so let's this is the concave mirror and this is the what convex mirror this one's inner is reflecting this one's outer is reflecting so look at it now if this whole thing is a sphere so the center this part is the what center of curvature this point at this point itself is called the center of curvature just like the middle part so if this place if from here to here is the total um, size of the sphere so what do you think half of it from here to here will be it will be called the radius of curvature remember now if half is diameter half of the diameter is the what is the radius so this place is called the center of curvature and it's very very important we represent it as c why from here to the pole is called the what the radius of curvature that p is the principal axis just as this is a circle then you have the center and you have the what the radius so let's look at this other picture that is here we have the C. You remember the C is the what the center of curvature. Why the P is a principal focus from P to C is called the radius of curvature. P is a focal point. That is the point where you uh, you will see the light. You will see the image. That's the focal point. The point of 
um, focus, just from the word focus. So let's read. The aperture is the width AB of the mirror. So everything from here to here is the width AB. So the pole P is the center of the reflecting surface of the curved mirror. So this is the is the center. You know, look at it now. This is the reflecting surface. So this point, this center, this center here is the pole. Is the pole. It's just as if the starting point of the circle. So we can have pole here. We can have pole here. If you have a circle, this place is a pole. This place also can be the word pole. And this line is called the principal axis. It's just like you are saying the diameter is the, is the principal word axis. So we have the, the center of curvature, as I've explained, just assume as if this is a circle. The center of it is called the center of curvature. So it's the center of the sphere, which uh, of which the mirror forms a part. Then we have the radius of curvature, as I've explained. This is a, if this line is the diameter from the center to the pole is going to be the words the radius from the center to the other side also we form another word radius so the radius of curvature is a distance CP yes CP it is the radius of the sphere which the mirror forms a part then we have the principal axis PC the principal axis PC so is okay the principal axis is the line pc from the pole to the center of curvature so this is the principal axis this line is called the principal axis when parallel rays of light close to and parallel to the principal axis are incident on a concave mirror they converge or come together after reflection to a point f yes yeah, so what is called the focal the focus on the principal axis called the principal focus called the principal focus so those are the parts of the spherical mirror so the principal focus of a curved mirror is that point on the principal axis to which it, uh, incident rays parallel and close to the principal axis converge or form or from which they appear to diverge or reflect. This is it now. You see now, we have rays coming. These rays were coming like this. Look at their direction. You use direction to understand. Look at this arrow. It means this arrow is coming in incident then what happened they reflected and the reflection is going through one path have you seen that they are going through f at that point where they either converge or look at this one now what's happening here for the convex mirror they what they diverge that's why it is called convex or what diverging and we have concave or converge you see that the rays all of them the first one when it's it's the play the mirror it came through f the second one too through f also they all converged at this principal focus, the focus, so which is what F, and that is why it's called the concave or converging mirror. So that's the principal focus. But for the convex mirror, when the rays were coming, look at the rays coming, and they were coming, they were running. Oh, I'll be the first to get there. But what happened? They all reflected back and converged at that same point F, and that's why it's called a diverging. You see that they diverged, they did not come together, they scattered, and that's why it's called the convex or diverging mirror it's called the convex or diverging mirror so the principal focus of a concave mirror is said to be a real focus don't forget that f of a concave mirror is a real focus so that is positive because the reflected ray actually was passed through it have you seen this now it does pass through it when it's an incident ray came in it reflected through f that is why it's called real. It's not virtual. But look at this one. It was it, it, the one for the convex is virtual. So the point of convergence can actually be obtained on the screen, placed in front of a mirror as a bright spot of light. In contrast, as we can see it ourselves, this one, this is this this were the rays. The rays what they diverged, but we were the one that came to put it here. We just put a virtual representation so by contrast when such rays are incident on a convex mirror they diverge from the surface and appear to come from a from the point f on the principal axis behind the mirror and that is virtual so don't forget that the principal focus for the concave or converging mirror is what is real is real so this is what we've tried to explain have you seen the concave mirror the incident rays came and they all converged as f but for the convex mirror they also moved in the same direction all of them were coming but what happened they diverged so concave or converging mirror convex or what con um, diverging mirror so formation of images formed by mirrors by curved mirrors so this one is different you know the way we were talking about play mirrors that are when you stand in front of the play mirror it gives you back the way you are but for curved mirror is different the position of the object is what we determine 
the what the image size is going to determine the image size either it's going to be magnified either it's going to be diminished either it's going to be inverted either it's going to be real or virtual is wherever you place it either you place it let's go to the previous slide when you place okay this is fine okay if you place the object before c what is going to happen is different from when you place it on c it's different from when you place it before after c it's different from what when you place it on f and it's different from when you place it after f it's not like in your plane mirror that wherever you stand if you like stand 100 meters that is how the what the mirror is going to give you back your distance the object image distance but for the convex mirror is different it's not constant so the size nature and position of an image formed by a curved mirror depends Emphasis on depends on the position of the object from the pole of the mirror. Don't forget the pole. Remember I showed you the pole. I told you the pole. This is the pole. This point is the pole. Is the pole. So whatever the distance is from the pole is what we determine the what? The size of the image formed. So the size, nature, and position of an image formed by a curved mirror depends on the position of the object from the pole of the mirror. This can be studied by the use of an illuminated object, a concave mirror, and a screen. The concave mirror is placed on a stand and light from the illuminated object is made to fall centrally on it by the adjustment of the height of the mirror. That is, you continue to push it until you are able to get a very clear image. Until you are able to get a very clear image. First, we place the object a long way from the mirror yes which is the concave mirror then we start shifting the distance of the screen is then adjusted until a sharp image is what is obtained you know we have a screen we have you know if you want to if you want to portray something what do you do you stand in front of a mirror you want to reflect yourself so the same thing happens here so you said first we place the object a long way from the mirror yes we place it away from the mirror there will be a screen that is going to show us what that thing is at, um, behind the object. Do you understand? So it's just like you staying somewhere, then we are trying to portray you. So first we place the object a long way from the mirror. That's the mirror. Just look at this mirror. This is the concave. Let's go back. This is the mirror. So you place the object. This is the mirror that wants to show you something. So you place the object somewhere here. So that's what it's trying. So you place the object here. Then the screen. So first, we place the object a long way from the mirror. The distance of the screen is then adjusted until a sharp image is what is obtained. Until a sharp image is what is obtained. The image is found to be diminished, real and inverted and located be between the center of curvature and the principal focus of the mirror. So all the images will be formed in between the center of curvature and the principal focus of the mirror. When the object is moved closer to the mirror, the image becomes larger, but it's still real and inverted. So important. So this is what I'm trying to say. This is a concave. This is for a concave mirror. So for example, now we have different positions on our mirror. This is, you can have your C. You can have before, okay. You can have before C. You can have on C. You can have after C. You can have on F. You can have before F. Do you understand? So those are the places you can place your image. So look at now, at this first one, we place the object, the image at infinity. We place the image at what? Infinity. And where was the object produced? So the object was produced where? At the principal focus or the focal plane. This is where the object was produced at this point. The image, we cannot, when you say something is at infinity, that is, you cannot see where it is. So the image was placed very far. So, but the image produced was what? The image produced was at the focal, at the focal plane. So, at the principal focus. So, what type of image was produced? It was real. It was inverted. That is, it was upside down. It was extremely diminished in size. That is why we cannot see it. We cannot see anything here. Yeah. So, diminished in size. So, when the object is placed at infinity, when the object is placed at infinity, then what it's the image will be formed at the principal focus please don't forget that i told you that there are different things if you place it before c the first place was at infinity before c on c after c f then and um, before f then now the first one is what at infinity when we place the image at infinity very far away the image produced was here 
just like you the image produce but this is a curved mirror it's not like the normal plain mirror that gives you back yourself so the image produce was what at f at the principal focus or in the focal plane then this is the nature of the image. you see now it's always different it's not like you anyhow you are is what we return back as you lay your bed so you will lie on it but this one when we place the object at infinity the image that we got was real was inverted that is, it was not real was that it was produced in front of the mirror so it's not as if it was produced behind look at it now the image is in front of the mirror that's why it's called a real image it was not produced behind the mirror so inverted what was inverted upside down so it means we cannot see this image but it was produced here it was upside down then diminish like tiny just imagine it was put at infinity definitely the mirror gave us a tiny thing because the image was far away so that was why the image was real don't forget that produced in front of the mirror you can see it yourself this is where the image is at the fo principal focus so it's inverted and extremely diminished so now after we have kept the image at the image is just notice one thing if the image is going in this direction let me just try to do that on the board so we can understand what i'm trying to say very quickly so you can know as your image is moving forward as your object is moving forward your image will be moving backward just know that they will be moving in opposite what direction they will be moving in opposite direction so if you are coming you know we drew something like this So we have something like this so as your image as your object is being pushed you know the first one was at infinity yes the image also was at the principal focus f abby so as the image is coming like this as the object is coming like this the image will be doing what will be coming like this don't forget that so the first one was placed before you know we have c Yes, we have C, Abby. We have F. Don't forget your F is the principal focus. Your C is the center of curvature. And from here to here is your radius of curvature. If, for example, now the first one was placed, what? The first image was placed at infinity. We could not see it, right? So, and the image was produced there. And don't forget, we said the image was inverted, very tiny. Have you seen the way I do it? It was inverted. It was small. So the next one now was now put before C, Abby. This image, object is going to the right. Image will be coming. So, the next one, image will be produced before, after F. The next one, if this image now left before C, where will it go to? It will go to C. The way with the object also be placed. It will also be, after, it will be also be on C. So, this is the only point where the image size and the object size will be what will be the same thing don't forget what i've just explained to you just have that understanding as you are moving this is the con um the convex mirror the concave mirror rather you have it like this right you have it like this i said you have your c which is the center right then you have your f it's just so simple for the curved mirrors as your image objects as you are moving your objects like this your image will be coming what? It will be coming like this. As easy as that. So the first thing we did, I've, I've given you this, sh this very short analogy. We kept our object at infinity. And where did it start from? The image was produced. Yeah, yes, the image was in front of the mirror, which made it real. It was not again. It was inverted. That is upside down. What again do we notice? Then it was diminished. It was very small. So that's the image. So I told you one thing. The next one now, we want to put it where? Before C, right? If we are putting the next object before C, the next image cannot be going forward. It's going to come this way. It's going to be coming. So it's going to be here. Do you get it now? So the next one now, you know, when I put it here, so it will be produced in between what? C and F. Then in next place, we are going to put it on C. And that's what I was saying. I said, C, putting the image on C, which is the center of curvature, is the only point where the image size will be the same. They will have the same size. So let's go back to our slide to continue our explanation. So look at it now. We said the first place at infinity. The image produced was at the principal focus. And what type of image? Real, inverted, and diminished. Just as I said, error, R, I, D, read. Simple. The first one, read, real, inverted and extremely diminished in size so that's the first one so let's go to the next one i told you after we put it at infinity then before c right 
So have you noticed what I was trying to explain? The object was coming inside. What happened to the image? The image is coming outside. So simple. So look at it now. Now the image was placed where? Before C. And what happened to the object? You know, this one was extremely small. You see that it's already becoming big. Have you seen it? Small. Uh -huh. This one, it became a bit big. Then the same size. This one is going to become what? Bigger. Because it's magnified. It's so simple. It's so small. Okay. We started seeing it. Okay. Small. Because I told you, the way you are coming in, the other one will be coming out. And also the sizes will be different. You see now, from very small, yes, it became small, not too small. It was still diminished. Then from there, it became what? Same size. So after same size, what do you expect to happen? It cannot go smaller now. What will happen now? It's now become bigger, magnified. Do you understand? This one too, magnified. Just the same way this one was extremely small. This one too will be what? Extremely what? Magnified. So as simple as that. So let's continue. Let's start. So I said the next one was beyond the center of curvature. Abby. Look at it now. The first one was, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, at infinity. The next one was beyond. Because we are, let's, we are reading from the pole, Abby. So beyond the center of curvature. Definitely. Since the first one started from F. The next one will be after F. And that's between C and F. So, where is the image produced? Between the principal focus and center of curvature. So simple. The next one is also still diminished. It is real, inverted. Don't forget, all the images will be real and inverted. But the only thing we can now be changing is either it is diminished or what? Magnified. Do you get it now? So, the first two, they are diminished. The center is same size. The next two will be what? Magnified. You get now. So let's continue now. So we have what here now. The real is real is inverted and also what diminished, not as diminished as when we placed it at infinity, right? But it's still what diminished. So let's go to the next one. We now put it gong 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 at the center of curvature. And you know, I told you that the object moved forward. This one, so we move and they met here. And so at that point, it was real, inverted, and the same size. The object size and the image size is was the same at the center of what curvature. Don't forget that. So simple. If you can just go through this, you understand what I'm saying. Read real inverted and extremely what diminished. Isn't it that infinity? You brought it beyond C on C. You know, after C, where are we now going to go? We are going to go a bit in front of C, right? That is exactly. I told you the object will be moving to the right. The image will be moving to the left, right? So look at it now. It's now on C. And the size are, are, are the same. So after we have, we've already achieved same size, what happened? We'll now be achieving magnified size. Is that not so? We'll now be achieving what? Magnified size is so simple. Like extremely simple. You started with diminished, diminished. Once you've attained same size, the next thing we should be going to is what? Magnified. Do you get now? So now, after we have put it on C, where are we going? We're not going to go a bit forward between C and F. I told you the object will be moving forward. The image will be moving to the opposite what direction. So now when we put it between what C and F, this is the object here. Let me show you. At this point, this is the image. This is the object. This is the image. At this point, this is the object. This is the image. That's why we say the image is inverted. You can see that it's upside down. Inverted. Look at the object. Look at how big the object is. Look at how small the image is. So that is diminished and it is real. Why is it real? Because you can see it in front of the mirror. It is not behind. If you are seeing it behind, then it is virtual. Just like we did for the convex mirror, the divergence, the divergence of the con um, convex mirror. It was virtual. She gets now. So, but this one is in front of the mirror. So that is why it is what? Real. It is not what? Virtual. So now, when we place this between C and F, what do you expect? The image will be magnified. And where will it now be? It will be after C, definitely. Because it is moving in the opposite direction. As this one is entering, Mama is, the other one is what? It's going out. As object is entering, it's going to the principal focus. Image will be going out of the principal focus. So simple. After that, at the front of your mind. So look at it now. The image is now between C and F, right? So now, the object is between C and F. Then the image is what? After C. It's just a small mathematical principle. Once you understand that. It's so simple. So what will happen now? The image is real. Uh -huh. Inverted and magnified. Yes, not so magnified, but it's bigger than the... Uh, you can see it with your own eyes now. Look at the image formed. Look at the... Uh, look at the... Sorry, the object. Look at the image formed. 
is bigger right so let's go then now after we have moved from that place the next thing is to move what after what at the principal focus so look at the image now is going to where after it was between c and n then the last part this was where c started from i believe this was where the image started from right and this is where the image the object has gotten to now so at the focus what do you expect to happen to just the opposite look at it now when you now place your object at the focus the image too just like this point when the image was at infinity what happened to the object it was produced at the principal focus now you now went to put your object at the principal focus the image will be at what infinity which is what extremely what magnified extremely magnified so don't forget that it is extremely we cannot even say maybe it's inverted but it should be what extreme but yes it should be real inverted but so so big at, when you put it at that focus, you know it's a focus. When you say something is a focus, that is where all the reflections are. So it is at infinity and what extremely magnified. Then the last one, which is now between what C and F. So where will the objects now come to? Behind the mirror, yes, and that is virtual. That is the only point where you have a virtual erect and what magnified image please these are so so easy look at it you can see it yourself all the other ones you can see that this is where the first image was this is this another image here this is the image of this one this is the image of this one this is the image but this one the image is behind the mirror and i already told you when the image is not produced in front of the mirror we call it a virtual image we call it what a virtual image so please this is so simple take your time to read it take your time to understand it this, there, there is no any complexity about it there's no complexity about that there's no complexity at all about that so and that is all so let's continue so sign convention so we have what is called the mirror formula we have what is called the mirror formula we have what is called the for mirror formula and the mirror formula is so easy look at it now you can see this mirror which is the con this this mirror here as you can see the mirror which is a convex mirror this is the reflecting surface yes this is the concave mirror rather so something is so important that you need to know so let me just quickly draw something on our board for us this is our bot control delete so just as you know you know that when you are, you are drawing your this thing if, you are, if, if you've plotted i know you've plotted graph you know you have the x as is sorry let me try to make my this thing straight so you know you have oh sorry <laughs> okay let's manage it like that so you know you have the y this y part is positive right this y part is what is negative then you have your x this x part is what is positive and this x part is what negative so this is what is trying to say that these things are very 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 important so anything that is here if you know we have if your c you know this place was the p i mean let's assume this is our p this is our c this is our f right and we can have our images here or here so anytime supposing this is the mirror let's assume this is the mirror anytime the the image is to the left maybe in front of the mirror your f will be what will be negative if the image is here the i will be neg will be negative because x just look at this place x this is y okay let me write a few things you have one over f this is the mirror formula Control Z. Okay, Control. Oh, Control Z. Perfect. I wanted to press Control, but I did not press Control Delete. So look at it now. You have what is called the mirror formula. You have what is called the mirror formula. So the mirror formula we have one over F is equals to one over U plus one over v so this is what we are trying to say right so we have three things so u is your object's distance v is your image distance from this point everything is from this principal focus this um, p this p everything is from here not the principal focus is from this p so f is from here to here right so wherever the image if the image was produced here that's from here to here that's what is called the image side if the object was here so from here to this point this is the reference point this place 
is a reference what is the preference point so from here to here is also the what if that was the object that would be your u so don't forget that if the question says that the focus is in front of the mirror then it means it will be you use it as negative that is your f will be minus same goes with the u and the v but if it is here it will be what it will be positive also the height if the height is standing erect then you know that that is up that is up then that's positive but if it's inverted then it means it's going down then that is what negative don't worry let's go and look at the slide so that we can understand it more so look at it now the new cartesian so look at it now distance if this is if the distance is towards this side then it is negative if it's towards this side it is what positive if the height is inverted it will be what negative but if it's standing upright it will be what positive that's what it's trying to say. just use your x and y axis to remember negative x positive x negative y positive y so if direction the distance is towards the left the distance um, of the what's it called of the image from the prince from this p or <coughs> or the distance the principal as or the distance of the what's it called distance of the object from this p or the focus f from this p everything at this side is going to be negative but if it's behind this mirror then it will be positive that is what this new cartesian sign is telling us ideally the normal thing was for concave mirror f u and v are positive why the opposite is for the distance for the convex mirror f is negative but for this new cartesian anything that falls here in front here is positive why everything that goes here is what is yeah, is negative rather why this place is positive don't worry when we solve questions you will understand when the mirror formula is used in solving practical problem it is necessary to add a positive or a negative sign to each of the distances according to a sign rule or convention remember we've talked about magnification when we um, talked about the pino camera b the inner magnification produced by a mirror is given by v over you don't forget your v that is your image distance and u is the object distance the, is equal to height of the image over what height of the object so let's not forget that so look at it now the normal thing before these two things when you solve them the same way you will get the same answer so let's just try to explain normally we are saying that real objects and real images are considered to be at positive distance of the mirror you know what we call real objects what are real objects real objects are objects formed in front of the mirror so if they say the image is in front of the mirror you know that we cannot have a virtual object it's not possible we cannot have a virtual object objects are always what are always real though you cannot have a virtual object so if they say the image is real i explained what a real object image is if they say the image is real then it means it's formed in front of the mirror so normally the the ideal thing is images formed in front of the mirror are what they are real and they are positive that is that you that v sorry will be positive she get but for the new cartesian yeah, that one which is very easy for you to remember using your the four sides the y axis and the x axis any image that is in front which is real is what is negative so simple to remember so let's go to they said the other one i said virtual images we've talked about virtual images right virtual images are images formed behind the mirror so the normal the real is positive that that real is positive is telling us that for virtual image if real images are positive be, uh, automatically virtual images will be what they will be negative but that one is not telling us that new cartesian is telling us that just focus on the axis the coordinates the x axis and the y axis the x axis this part is positive this part is negative the upper um, y is positive the lower y is what negative so we are saying real objects and real images are considered to be positive abby but this one is telling us that anything to the right that is to the negative x axis are what negative but the ones with the positive x axis are what are positive 
virtual images are at a negative distance from the mirror but that one is saying for the distance so it's the same thing positive to the x axis and um, to the uh, positive to the positive x axis negative to the negative what x axis the other one is saying focal length of a concave mirror is positive why for the convex is negative but this one is there's nothing that concerns it once is to the x axis so the negative x axis it is negative if it's to the positive x axis it is positive so that is so simple i know that the one that you used to remember since you know your x and your y axis is for the x the new cartesian but the thing is we are going to get the same answer that's just what this thing is trying to say we're still going to get our answers we're still going to be what are still going to be the same our answers are still going to be do are still going to be what they are still going to be the same but this new cartesian is what is easier for you to understand because you know your x and your y axis so let's continue Let's go to the next slide. We're going to see examples. So this is what I've tried to explain. We've said this now. For a concave mirror, focal length of the concave mirror is always negative for this thing. So focal length is always, because it's to this side, it's always like, why? For a convex mirror, because it's to the positive, it's always what? Positive. Do you understand? But normally, if we check it normally, it was the opposite. For the real is positive, this one is what I is taking the ne positive, why this one is taking the negative. But I want us to focus on the uh, this is Cartesian, the new Cartesian. That one makes it so easy for us to understand. This is so easy for us to understand. So look at it now. As I've explained, let's check it again. Anything that is coming to this, our negative x axis. Abby is what? Negative. To when you know that is coming to our positive x axis, it's positive. So if the image, for any image that falls here, is minus v. If the R is inverted, like it's facing down, it is minus. Do you understand? So all inverted images are minus. So if they say the image is inverted, though, is what? So that's what, that's what the height is going to carry a negative because, you know, this is height now. This side is distance. Moving like this is distance. Coming up is what? Height. So that's what they are, is trying to say. So let's check our example. So the first question says, find the position. Yes. Nature. You know, position is the size. And si uh, position, sorry, that's the distance, nature and size of the image. When an object size, one centimeter, that's object. Just the time you are saying object is whatever it is, like your cup in front of the what? Concave mirror. Abi, any an object of size one centimeter is placed at a distance nine centimeter from a concave mirror of focal length, six centimeter. So let's not forget that. Let's now check. He said an object of size one centimeter. So that our one is what is our what e object height, right? Is our object height, and he said it's one centimeter. We cannot have an uh, this thing. So our object is one centimeter, and it's not inverted. Your object is not inverted. It's your image that can be inverted. So find the position, nature, and size of the image when an object of size one centimeter is placed at a distance. So what do we have? We have the object's height. And we have the object distance, which is the what the u that is nine centimeter, right? So look at it from our uh, solution from a concave mirror of focal length. So we have the focal length at six centimeter. So that focal length also is in front. So let's go and draw it. We already assumed. Let's go to our this thing. We'll write down our parameter control delete. So look at it now. This was our concave mirror. So this is our concave mirror, right? So this is it. We already accepted that anything to this x axis minus negative, minus x. This one is minus y. So here now, we have our, you don't forget, this place will be our p, right? Which is our focus, our axis. So we have um, our principal focus. So Sorry, our p. <clears throat> so we have here to be our f, right? So from here to here is our f. So... We now have our what? Image. So let's assume that we put the image here. So what did they say the image size is? Let's go to what we were saying. We said that when an object of size one centimeter, so look at it. So what we are saying now is that this image, this object rather, this object, this object here is what? One centimeter. Yes, up. Okay, so what else did they give us again? They now told us that, ah, from where it is, so 
to the p is what nine centimeters so it means from here from this point where this image object is to this p you know this is our this thing is what nine centimeter abby so they are now asking us that what is the size of the image formed don't forget everything is to the left so automatically our u our u is what minus nine centimeters so simple right because we've already accepted that we are using this new cartesian this is plus y right minus y right uh -huh. minus x uh -huh. plus x everything that falls to this side is negative so you so what will be our f also we were given our f yes i remember let's check for our f our f was what our f was they said okay six centimeter right so our f also it's also from here to this point right that's six centimeter so let's come here so our f here now is what six centimeter but it's going to also be what negative because it's to this side right and don't forget our mirror formula that i told us the other time the mirror formula so we'll be able to tell what type of image will be formed. So I said our 1 over f, right, is equals to 1 over u, right, plus 1 over v. Okay, so we have it as 1 over minus 6 is equals to 1 over minus 9 plus what? 1 over what? v. So we can bring this to this side, right? So we can have that 1 over v, right, is equals to 1 over minus six abby so this is going to be minus one over nine right so nine times six is what what's nine times six, six, six 40. fifty-four yes i'm coming okay so i'm coming okay minus 18 okay so that's 54 right so let's put our 54 there so six in um this thing will be what minus what that'll be minus nine abby minus what minus six and that's going to give us what minus nine minus six that's minus 15 right over what 54 i hope our this thing 1 over v 1 over v is equals to minus 15 over 54 this is correct so your v your v will be equals to minus 54 over 15 so and that will give us 15 times 5 Mm -mm. Yes, we are. There's something minus nine one over six. Mm. Mm. Okay, so it's supposed to be plus. Sorry, since it's crossing. Okay, sorry. When this one comes to this side, it should be a plus. Mm. Yes, this one should turn to a plus. So plus. Yes, sorry. That was where the mistake was. So that's minus three. Not minus this thing. So that's minus three. Minus three. Let's clear and do it again. Let me see. Control Z. Let's do it. Let's do it from there again. Okay, so this is our mirror formula. So let's put in our right parameter. So we have 1 over minus 6, right? Is equals to 1 over minus 9 plus 1 over v, right? So I said we are going to say 1 over v is equals to this one, 1 over minus 6. So this one is coming to me. So the sign is going to change to what? Plus. So 1 over 9, right? So the LCM of this is what? 54. Because 6 times 9 is 54. Minus 6 in 54 will be what? Minus 9, right? Then plus what? 9 in 54 will be 6. So that's going to give us what? 
minus 3 over 54. So our 1 over V is equal to this. So 1 over V is equal to minus 3 over 54. So our V is equal to 54. That's divided by minus 3, which is equal to what? Minus 18. So let's check that. So this image now, can you just tell me the <coughs> what we got here now was the V. That's the image. So that is the image was what? From here now, the image was here. 18 centimeter. Abby, because look at it now. The object was 9 centimeter from this P. But the image was 18 centimeter from it. Have you seen that? Like double the distance. So this minus is telling us that what? It was the image is what? Is real. Is that not so? Because it's formed in front of the mirror. In front of the mirror. Because we already know using our in front of the mirror. Using our this thing. Our new Cartesian. So the image is real. So let's go back to our slide. So now we got it as 18. So the image formed is in front of a mirror and at a distance of what? 18 centimeters from the mirror. As simple as that. As simple as what? As simple as that. The image formed is in front of the mirror and at a distance of 18 centimeters from the mirror. So the next question now says that we want to know the nature and size of the image. So Getting that, we have to know the magnification. Magnification. We want to know if it was magnified. We want to know if it was diminished. And you remember our magnification formula, right? So, like now, we've got it. So, control, delete. Let's clear our board. So, don't forget our magnification. We want to know the nature. We want to know the nature and size. That's like the height. We've gotten the distance, right? So we're going to use our magnification formula. Don't forget, our magnification is V over U. which is also equals to IH over what? Over OH, right? So we, we can use this. Everything is equating to each other. So we can say M is equals to, we got that distance as minus 18, right? Over what? Minus what? minus 9 so our m is equals to what 2 so the magnification is 2 so let's go that let's go back to our slide so we got our m as 2 so what is that telling us okay sorry it's telling us that the image is what magnified so m sorry the form, normal formula for m is m is equals to minus v over u is equals to image height over object that is a minus aside the minus that these two carries so it's going to be minus 2 so, but this two is what matters. If the number is, uh, is below one, if the number is below one, then you say it is diminished. It is diminished. But if the number is above one, then it is what? Magnified. You don't check. There is nothing that concerns you with that. Um, this, thing. this one is just telling us where it is. That it is in front of the mirror. So, this one now. Is telling us that the image was magnified twice we can even see it now we had 9 and we had 18 so it was magnified twice Abby and now can we now get our what image height yes of course we can so we can use the magnification which is 2 right we have our magnification is equals to what minus 2 right so so see now we have our magnification to be equals to minus two so putting that here we can get our what our answer so okay let's let's go back there i do tell you that this minus here is just telling us this area where the what the object the, the image is formed that is is in front of the mirror right so magnification which is equals to i h over what o h so we have two is equals to our IH was not given, right? Then our OH, you remember our OH is, was 1. From the question, size, 1 centimeter. So look at it. So which is 1. And, and you see that it answers all our questions, right? So our IH is equals to 2. It's also double because we said it's twice magnified, right? So OH was 1. IH, 2 magnified twice. What other thing? V minus 18. U minus 9. I've told you what this minus is indicating. That is, it is produced in front of the mirror. It is a real image. It is a what? Real image. 
And this one that is giving us two is telling us that it is what? Upright. It is not inverted. Because if it was minus, then it should have known that it is what? Inverted. So look at it now. That's the image height. So image is magnified. And that is all about that example. Very simple, right? Yes. So let's go to this next question. So without understanding, now let's do this. An object of height 5 cm, okay? So is, the object is 5 cm. Is placed at a distance 10 centimeter from a convex. Okay, so this is what we need to understand. This one is a convex mirror. A convex mirror. So you remember that a convex mirror is to the left, right? Let's control delete. So a convex mirror now is like this, but everything is where is here. This is the reflecting surface for a convex mirror, it's not inside. This is the reflecting surface for a convex mirror. So it's on P. So we are going to have our F here, right? We're going to have our what? C here. And this is so everything is here. So look at what they are saying now. <clears throat> they said an object of height, an object of height five centimeter is placed at a distance of ten centimeter from a convex mirror. So it's placed. This is a convex mirror. So you know that it's to the right. So you know, definitely it's going to be positive, right? So five centimeter. So this is five centimeter. So let's continue. So an object of height five centi. Okay, it's the object that is five. It's placed ten centimeter. So that was a mistake. So, so let me just do control Z. Okay. So the distance. If this was the image formed, right? So the distance was what ten centimeter. Then the height was what five centimeter so this was what was placed in front of this curved mirror then we want to check the type of image it will what it will produce so look at it now so and uh, so uh -huh, of a, which produces a virtual image of height three centimeter so it produces a virtual image of height three centimeter find the focal length of the mirror and position of the image so let's not forget our u is what minus 10 centimeter it said an object of height five centimeter is placed at a distance 10 centimeter from okay 10 centimeter from so it's opposite so this is it now it wasn't placed here it was placed 10 centimeter from so that was why it was this is it it was placed 10 centimeter from it wasn't here <clears throat> from it was placed 10 centimeters from the convex mirror, not in front of the convex mirror. So it was placed 10 centimeters from the convex mirror, which produces a virtual image of height, what? 3 centimeters. Find the focal length of the mirror and position of the image. So every other thing will be what? Positive at this other side. Because, you know, for the convex mirror, it's to the right side. And that's why we have it like this. So we have our U to be minus 10 centimeters. We have the image height from the question. Because it created a virtual image to be what? Three centimeter. And we have the object height to be five. So we can get our magnification. And from our magnification, we can get every other thing we need to get. So look at it now. We have our U, I, H, and O, H. We have our U. Our U was equal to what? minus 10 centimeter because it was not placed at that side it was placed from away from the convex mirror that's why it's negative so what it was placed in front the normal place then it will be what positive then we have our ih we also have our what oh so with this we can get our v right so let's check what's our ih our ih is three centimeter oh five centimeter ih three centimeter OH is what? 5 centimeters. So let's not forget our magnification formula, which is what? V over U is equal to what? Let's not forget our magnification formula, which is what? Okay, we have our H, so we don't even need to use. So we can just use, you know, our magnification formula is minus V over U is equal to IH over what? OH. So we can just use the two parameters we have. IH over what? OH. So what is our IH? Our IH is 3 and our OH is what? 5, right? So we are good. So, so if I multiply both of them by um, this thing, let's just. So 5 over 50, that was going to give us 0 0.6 centimeter. So the magnification, 
So was that, was it magnified? No, it wasn't magnified. It's diminished. It wasn't magnified. Even from, look at what you were even giving. You should be able to speak that, oh, this thing became smaller. The image height was this. The object height. So, and look at it. It's less than one, as I said the other time. So this one is not magnified. It did what? It's diminished. It diminished. Don't forget that. Those are, that's the way to always understand the type of image formed. So the image was what? <coughs> the image was diminished. So we already have our M, right? So we can use our M to get our V. Is that not so? So now, okay, let's use that. Let's get our... <coughs> let's get our V then. So our M now, our M, which is equals to what? Minus V over what? Over U. We already have our M, Abby. Our M is what? 0 0.6. Is equals to minus, we don't have our V, over what is our U? Minus 10, right? So, what is going to be our distance? So, that will be what? Is equals to minus 6, right? So, V is equals to what? 6 centimeter. So, V is equals to 6 centimeter. Can you tell me something about that image? The image formed. Can you tell me anything about the image formed? Is the image formed, is it uh, away from the mirror or... In front of the mirror because it's positive so it means the image was not formed away so it means the image formed was six centimeter from this place so this is the image formed six centimeter a smaller image was formed this image was five centimeter right but a smaller image of three centimeter was formed here just from this one because it's not minus <clears throat> if it was minus then it means the image will be formed away from the convex mirror so now we can get our focal length also, right? So that will just be our 1 over F. <coughs> so we can get our focal length, which is what? 1 over F is equals to 1 over V plus what? 1 over U. So from our board, <coughs> we have that already. So you solve it, your, you know what your U is, which is minus 10, and you get your F, which is what? 15 centimeters. So F being positive, that has also told us that. It's not to this side. It's also where? To this side. So you see how easy and simple this is. So it's the same principle we did for the, uh, for the last question. So you can go through them and understand it. They are so, so simple and easy to understand. Each of them, it, we will be able to depict which kind of image we have solved. So, practical applications of curved mirror. So, these are what curved mirrors are used for. Retrieving mirrors, reflectors in telescope, driving mirrors for motors, and so on. But convex mirror has some disadvantage when used as driving. The image is always smaller than the object. You should have noticed that. Now, maybe you can, your mirror broke or you're outside and you just want to check yourself. You notice that, ah, this thing is not showing me as big as that. It's not showing me as fine. So it gives a false impression of the distance as the, as the image seems farther away. Then these are the practical applications. Use um, of parabolic mirrors in cars, uh, uh, headlamp and such light. Parabolic mirror is a special type of concave mirror which has the shape of a parabola. Yeah. So parabolic mirrors are used in car and lamp as such light. And that is all for this class. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the class. Please go through everything and solve. If you have any issues, you can always reach us. Thank you. Bye-bye.